Okay, tonight I'm making BLTs. So I have my bacon sitting here on like a little cooling rack on a baking sheet and I bake that in the oven. I started out not um, on at all and then once the bacon's in the oven, I turn it up to 400 degrees and I cook it for about 25 minutes and that's usually perfect. All right, here's dinner. We got a BLT, a tangerine, and some um, Arby's fries that were in our freezer and that's dinner. Okay guys, it's the morning and I'm making refried beans in the crock pot. So I'm starting out with two cups of rinsed dry beans, pinto beans. And then I have one four ounce can of green chilies. Half an onion, I have a monster onion. Usually I use a normal size onion cut in half. This one's huge, so you just cut it in half, peel it and throw it in. Then I'm gonna throw in a couple of cloves of garlic minced up. All right, I've got some salt and pepper in there. Then I'm gonna use a good pinch of cumin. Then I'm gonna add like four and a half to five cups of water and just let it cook for six or seven hours on low. Okay, so I drained the beans and I've got them in here and I'm just gonna puree it until it's you know smooth, but not it doesn't have to be like super smooth. If you like it chunky, that's a good way to do it too. There it is, refried beans. Pretty easy and very tasty. I have a pound of ground pork cooking away here and I'm going to add two polanos and half of a bunch of green onions, basically the white part, the bottom part here. I'm gonna cook that until it's brown, basically and the vegetables are soft and then I'm going to add in some other stuff to pad out this meat. We got that browned and the fat drained, so now we're just gonna add, I think I've got like half a packet of taco seasoning here. So we're going to add all of this, stir it up, and add a little bit of water to it also. And then we're going to add in about half a lime's worth of freshly squeezed lime juice. Half a cup of frozen corn. And a can of drained, rinsed black beans. And the last thing is like a big old handful of chopped fresh cilantro. And as you can see, this went from just a little bit of meat to a whole big old thing. This will feed our family twice. And yeah, it's double beans. I made refried beans and I've got black beans in here, but we happen to like them both, so that works out. And there it is. We've got the taco meat, the beans, cheese, pico de gallo, sour cream, and some avocado on there. Yum. Okay, I'm making nachos and the house is crazy. Welcome to dinner time. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put some chips in the bottom of these. Okay, now we're gonna put on some of the uh, refried beans we made yesterday. Just gonna kind of um, try and spread them a little evenly out on the chips. Okay, and now we're gonna sprinkle on some of the leftover taco meat mixture. Then some leftover pico de gallo is gonna go all over this. Then we're gonna put on some green onions. Then we're gonna squeeze on some fresh lime juice. some grated cheddar. Then on Hannah and I's, because Eric doesn't like this stuff, I got a fun treat. It's some um, nacho cheese that, in a can. That, 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 that. Whoa. <laughs> then I'm just gonna repeat the layers one more time. Okay, now they go into the oven at 400 degrees for about 15, 20 minutes until everything's all melted and gooey. It's a great way to use up leftover tacos taco stuff that doesn't really have enough to feed the whole family for another meal so it's a fun way to use it there we go all done and we're ready to eat i'm making a couple different uh, basically a bunch of side dishes to make a dinner tonight so first thing i'm making is collard greens and i am um, uh, cooking a couple slices of bacon here i removed the bacon that's cooked and now i'm putting in one large chopped onion and i'm going to cook that until it's soft the onions are cooked, so I added about two cloves of minced garlic to the pan. And now I'm just going to cook this until it's fragrant, about 30 seconds. And then the collard greens are going to go in. I have a pound of greens washed and chopped into about two inch pieces. And we're going to cook this until it starts to wilt. Okay, now we're going to add in three fourths cup of chicken broth, salt and pepper, and a little pinch of red pepper flakes. Now we just reduce the heat, cover, and simmer for 45 minutes. Here's something else I'm making tonight, um, Dijon roasted potatoes. All right, so um, for the potatoes, in the bowl I have two tablespoons of olive oil, 
a tablespoon of Dijon mustard, one clove of garlic minced, one fourth teaspoon of thyme, one fourth teaspoon of rosemary, and salt and pepper. And then I have five red potatoes diced up here and I'm just going to mix those together. Okay, now I've got them all mixed up. They're on a greased baking sheet and they're going in the oven at 375 for 40 to 45 minutes. So I have to turn them occasionally. Okay, so the last thing I'm making tonight is what I like to call a quick Italian stir fry. So I am starting off by melting a tablespoon of butter and then I also have a tablespoon of olive oil in here. And to the pan I'm going to add three cut up medium sized zucchini, a red pepper chopped, and an onion chopped. And I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper at this point and some Italian seasoning, just a couple shakes of it. I'm just going to stir this around until the vegetables get a little soft and then I'm going to add some other stuff. I'm going to add a couple of cloves of minced garlic to this and stir it around. Two chopped um, red tomatoes and Two little yellow tomatoes chopped just because that's what I had you can substitute with whatever tomatoes you'd like to use then I'm gonna add about I don't know two tablespoons or so of light Italian dressing cover this and let it cook for six or seven minutes last step is about a fourth cup of grated Parmesan cheese and stir it up and you're ready all right and here's dinner we've got the roasted Dijon potatoes the greens the zucchini tomato stir-fry and an orange really what? That's what we're having for dinner. The first thing I'm making um, for tonight's dinner is twice baked potatoes. I'm doing these earlier in the day so it's really cold outside so I'm going to cook these in the oven. Um, I poke them, I'm going to rub them with a little olive oil, put some coarse sea salt on them and cook them for one hour. Okay I hollow them out and then I put the insides in here. You're wondering why I have less. When I hollowed them out it turned out the two of them were not good in the middle darn it so we only have four but that's enough for us to the insides I'm going to add a couple pieces of crumbled bacon and some shredded cheddar cheese a bunch of dried chives a tablespoon of butter and a couple scoops of sour cream salt and pepper and I'm going to whip this around until they look like mashed potatoes and put them back inside these shells here now we're going to top them with a little extra cheese on each one. Um, a little bit of the last piece of bacon. And a little bit um, more of the dried chives. And these are going to go in the oven at 375 until the cheese is bubbly and brown. Then they're ready to eat. The uh, second thing I'm making for dinner tonight is carrot ginger soup. But since you guys already saw me make that last week, I'm just going to show you that <laughs> it's almost done here and it's part of our dinner all right and the last thing I'm making tonight is some burgers so I'm gonna add some I can never say this but I'm gonna add this sauce to it <laughs> a little bit of garlic powder some minced onions dried minced onions and then some salt and pepper and I'm gonna form these into patties all right I've got them shaped into patties and I've got a pan heating up here and then I'm just gonna toss these in and brown them on both sides Here's dinner. We've got our burger in here all done and a uh, twice baked potato, half of a um, tangerine, and our carrot ginger soup. So for dinner tonight we're having leftover chili from last week that um, I froze, warmed up, and we're going to make some noodles with that. And then I'm going to make this um, copycat Jiffy cornbread mix. So we'll see how it turns out. I'll let you know. So I need two thirds cup of flour, half a cup of cornmeal, then we need three tablespoons of sugar, one tablespoon of baking powder, and a fourth teaspoon of salt. Now I mixed that all together and now I'm adding one egg. Then I'm gonna add a third cup milk. I didn't have any dairy milk left so I'm using coconut milk. And two tablespoons of vegetable oil. I'm using canola. Now we're just going to mix this until it's combined. Okay, just like regular Jiffy Mix, if you let this sit for a couple minutes, you're going to get a better result. It's going to rise and everything. I don't know why. Science. Um, it has something to do with the baking powder. Bake, bake these in a 400 degree oven for 15 to 20 minutes or until they're a little golden brown and they're, they're done. You can tell. Okay, so here they are out of the oven. They don't exactly look like the Jiffy 
popcorn muffins, but they smell a lot like them. We'll see what they taste like. They're actually, they taste really good. I think the only difference is, is that I used coconut milk instead of regular milk, but they're awesome. You should definitely try them. I think that they said that this comes out to be like 15 cents or something per recipe. So that's cheaper than the 75, 50 cents you spend on the, um, the ones in the box already in the store. And the recipe has the directions to make up your own mix and then put it in the pantry so you can just pull it out, add the ingredients and make it really quick.